Hi, Andrew Kramer here with VideoCopilot.net. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add camera shake inside of After Effects. Now, the idea behind this is to create the perception of power. For example, say you have a meteor coming down from space and impacting with Earth. You want the camera to kind of shake as if that impact was affecting what you're seeing visually. Does that make sense? <laughs> anyway. In this particular case, we have a baseball player hitting a ball, and in this uh, spot I put together, the idea was to make it seem as if when he hits the ball, it is just this most powerful explosion hit. So what I did is add camera shake. Now, to do that, we're going to go ahead and line the cursor up with just before he impacts, which is right around here. So let's just line it up right about here. And let's go down to the transform properties, particularly the position. And let's go ahead and set a keyframe by selecting the stopwatch. And what I want to do is move a little bit past, maybe about right here, and set another keyframe by checking the box here so that we want to basically make motion in between this area. So the next thing I want to do is from the window menu, I'm going to bring down the wiggler. Now this is a really, really great tool of After Effects. It creates random motion across keyframe values. In this particular case, there's no change from this keyframe to this keyframe. So what we want to do is make the difference within these keyframes our motion and our shake. So with these two keyframes selected, I'm going to go over here to the Wiggler settings and I'm going to make sure that the noise type is jagged. I'm going to make it all dimensions independent so that it moves up and it moves left and right. And for the frequency, um, I'm going to keep that at 15 like I have it and make sure the magnitude is set to 25. And the frequency is basically how many keyframes or how many bumps per second in this particular case. And the magnitude is how much to move it um, on each keyframe. So with these two keyframes selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And be careful to make sure you have just these two keyframes selected because if you select even other parts of it, you won't be able to use the wiggler because it needs to just use two keyframe values or keyframe values of the same parameter. So with these two selected, go ahead and hit apply and you notice immediately that we've created all these keyframes here. So let's go ahead and see what happens in our animation. We're going to just go ahead and preview this. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting this just this really abrupt movement, which is it's not very pleasing to say the least. But we're going to go ahead and work on this. So let's go ahead and zoom in here on our timeline. Let's look at our keyframes. Now we have a keyframe here at the end that's not equally spaced like all of them. So let's just go ahead and move this out so that everything's uniform. And what I first want to do is I want to turn on the motion blur. And to do that, let's go ahead and check the flag for the layer by clicking this check right under the M. And then turn on the major M, which is the global motion blur. And we go and check that. Now if we look through our video, we notice that our video gets blurred in the direction it's being pulled because of the keyframe. So let's just go ahead and preview that and see what we have. It takes a little bit longer because uh, it's rendering out the motion blur. Okay, that's, I think that's a whole lot better. It's not as jarring because the motion blur makes up kind of the data in between that our mind is kind of skipping over as we watch it uh, before. Um, but we still have a problem. We have this black underneath our footage. So I found a pretty cool technique to take care of that without having to do any matte painting or without having to do any enlarging of the clip. And with the clip selected, go up to the effects menu and go down to stylize and down to a plugin called motion tile. Now motion tile, I don't know what its actual purpose is, but if we go ahead and turn on this mirror edges and change the output width to 125 and the height to 125 also because that's how much our magnitude is so the position can possibly be offset more than um, 25 pixels which is exactly what this plugin is saying and the reason you don't want to just make it 150 is because After Effects does actually have to render out these pixels so just to keep it you know don't do more than you need to do basically so anyway as you can see we filled in the data here um, by using this motion tile plugin. Now I just want to remind you of a few things here. I'm going to shut off the motion blur. Is um, this technique works? Um, it works in a lot of cases, but it's not perfect. As you can see up here, we're getting kind of the mirror of 
this slanted edge, which is kind of causing a point. Now, because of the motion blur in this shot, it won't really be prominent at all. And of course, it is beyond the action safe, but it's a good idea to keep this in mind is that this plugin is not gonna work for everything. And especially when you have major offsets, you can really start seeing the mirroring of the effect. But anyway, just keep that in mind and let's go ahead and move on here. I'm gonna turn the motion blur back on and let's just go ahead and preview it from here on out now that we have our black edges filled in. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Um, if you wanna fine tune it, um, I see there's an extra jar at the end when it seems like maybe there shouldn't be about right about right here. So what we can do is we can just grab these two keyframes and delete them. And basically it will now just kind of go back to the original position without you know being too jerky. And let's go ahead and change this keyframe to easy ease so that it kind of smooths into the end position. Now let's go ahead and preview that again. All right, I'd say that looks pretty good. So this is a really, really good technique and, and I invite you to use the Wiggler. It's, it's an amazing tool. So anyway, good luck with this technique and I hope it helps you out.